Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks for joining. I'm John Mayfield and uh, wanted to do another study session tonight to go over a few items with you that uh, you might encounter on the real estate exam. And also want to be able to um, hopefully take some questions. It's a little bit challenging because um, unfortunately, and I'm going to go out right now if you'll just give me a half a moment and I will check my, glo my YouTube stream. But if there are some folks out there and uh, you have some specific questions you want to ask tonight, I'd be more than happy to answer those. So I'm just going to go out there very quickly for you and uh, we'll take a look at the YouTube site. And I better turn my microphone or my speaker off so that we don't have any reverberation. I just need to jump out to the website and I think I'll be able to see who all is out there and also be able to um, take a look if you have some questions you want to type in. So we're going to try to get this figured out. I'm in my new studio here and I'll be writing on the board a little bit. So I know I'm looking, there's, there's a couple of hot spots. So as I show you the board, um, I know there's a couple of spots that are a little bit hot. So I'm going to invest in some lighting and we're going to be working on this. Uh, and I apologize about that. In fact, I might get up and turn the lights off uh, during the broadcast just to kind of see as I play it back if I in fact need any additional lighting or how that works for you. So I'm going to come right up here and, and um, come back and take a look here. And I do not see any chat features right now, but um, if you have any questions, you can uh, do those and let me know. I think I might be able to see who's out there, but um, uh, right now, not able to actually see see any um, any specifics. If you are, there's a couple of people watching, which is good. <laughs> Several people are logging in now, so that's great. So if you have some things you want to mention in the, you want to uh, type in the chat, we'll, I'll be glad to take those. So um, just feel free to, to reach those out. I'm just taking a couple of quick things and my track pads over there and it keeps wanting to, to uh, jump on board. Well, well, good evening. Um, again, we'll get some of the lighting fixed and hopefully that you'll um, be able to work around that. Tonight, I want to spend a little bit of time on, uh, I'm going to log into actually chapter 15. Uh, one of the chapters, we'll take a look at one of the chapters in um, the Missouri course, probably go into chapter 15. We'll go into one of the review modules and I'd like to just go through some terminology and definitions with you and explain some of those for you. Uh, I've got a math problem I'd like to work as well, so we'll do that. And then again, if you have some questions and you want to send those to me, uh, you might even just email those because I could pull my email up right here and that might work the best way. So if you have some specific questions you're struggling with with the course, feel free to do that as well. Well, I have to tell you the um, pass rates have been really good. I got my pass rates this last week and I was very pleased with the, uh, with the results. We were much higher than many of the other schools in the state. And I never want to put down my competitors or competition, but I just want you to know that A, as I always say, it's, an, it's a challenging test and, and everyone tells me it's a tough test. But B, I want you to know that the material that you have is good material. And, I, and I've received, I could pull my email up and show you several emails this week from students. And, and so September, I'm looking to be a great month, who passed both parts of the exam and were very complimentary uh, of the material and how it helped prepare them for the exam to pass. Now, every one of them told me, John, it was really a tough test. But the feedback I received was very positive from the students. So study the material. I've had a couple of people, and I appreciate that. We Every time I think I've worked out all of the little bugs, um, you know, somebody will find something where maybe you got the answer wrong, and I, I have the 
the response um, marked correctly, but maybe the answer that I have typed in the box is incorrect. But I always appreciate any time you can point those out to me and let me know and I'll get those, get those fixed for you. A lot of people have finished the test this week, which has been really cool. So we'll have a lot more folks going in, hopefully to take the exam over the next week or two. Study hard, it's, it's a challenging test. Don't second guess yourself. And like I've mentioned, if you've studied very, very hard, don't change your answer. There's scientific studies that have been done that said, if, you, you're, if you've studied hard, that's the key, okay? Your first gut response or you know, answer is normally the best answer. And I, I just can't stress that enough. So you're gonna do good on the exam. And uh, again, thank you for thank you for your business and um, feel free to reach out to me anytime. So I'm gonna just throw this up there and I'm going to jump over to the course and we're gonna pull up one of the um, study sessions right now and kind of go through some, some finance stuff from chapter 15. First of all, I realize chapter 15 is one of the longest chapters. So I'm in the process of splitting that up into smaller sections and um, maybe even chapter 16 into a little smaller section. And um, so anyway, I, I understand that, but that chapter 15 is an important chapter. So it's kind of funny when I used to do the, the live version of, um, I'm gonna just pull my email up too, because if you have questions, I want you to send those via email, okay? So I'll have my email pulled up and just shoot those to John at mayfieldre.com or John at businesstechguy.com. And so I'll have my email pulled up and we'll be glad to take a look at any questions you have, okay? So I don't see any questions that have come through right now, but it's there and I want you to utilize that throughout the course tonight, okay? So I'm going to um, pull up chapter, I'm gonna pull up the review modules. Now I'm gonna bring this up again for you. And I wanna remind you that the review modules, and this is what it looks like, a little yellow um, tab. This is where all of the modules are free flow, okay? In other words, in this chapter or in these modules, you can jump anywhere you want to throughout the module. So if you want to go back and review chapter 15 and jump down to a specific section like we're going to do tonight, you don't have to start at the very beginning. In the main course, the main 48 hour course, you have to follow the path and the timers, okay? And I know I've had, I had one student, I remember he was frustrated because he said, well, I can read faster than you can and you're just, you're making it, you're making it way too long for me. Well, you know what? Um, that student actually never could pass my final exam and he, he quit and dropped out of the school. But, you know, this is not one of those courses you want to zoom through, okay? You want to go through the material and there's a reason why I'm, explaining the information to you and maybe doing it a little slower is because I'm hoping you're taking notes and you know it doesn't do me any good as a school to have poor pass rates and I don't want to take your hard-earned money and then you fail the test so you know um, in the main course you've got to follow the path and the timers and you cannot move forward. However, if you want to go back and review, you want to go into the review modules. Okay, so I used to have the review modules after chapter one. So I used to have like module one and then a review module of module one and then chapter two. And so the chapter one was locked down where you had to follow the path and then review module one was open so you could jump around. The problem I had, when students would go back to review, they would accidentally click on the real chapter one 
and then it's like, wait a minute, I can't jump forward and I don't want to have to go through the whole module. And then they'd get frustrated. And then because they had reopened module one, it would lock them out from going back to chapter 16 where they were. And I thought, wait a minute, this is going to, I don't have that much hair on my head right now. It's <laughs> left. Uh, although I saw a new product on TV, I'm going to have to check out. But uh, like I was really going to be losing my hair quickly. And I thought, wait a minute, let's just pull the review modules out and put those in a separate area. So don't forget that they're there. Sometimes I think some of the students don't want to go back and review, but you have to. OK, so that's what we're doing right now. So you can see I'm in the review modules and I'm going to go down here to chapter 15. See, that's the other thing about the review modules. You can go into any module you want at any time. And so this is probably going to ask me, do I want to resume or start over? And it's really not going to matter either way because we actually um, can move, move around anywhere we want. So I'll just hit resume. And it'll take me to the last slide I was at and which was a test question. But notice if I go over here to the left uh, and I think that might be. Yeah, the, this is the menu over here. I can go all the way back up here to the very first slide. However, I want to go through some types of loans with you today. Actually, let's start with discount points. That would be a good one. I can jump right down here to discount points. See that? So don't forget that the review modules allow you to go anywhere you want to within the course. OK, and just use the menu over on the side. Maybe you just want to go back into chapter 15 and do the, the review quiz at the end. Or maybe you just want to look at the flashcards. Either way is fine. But that's what we're going to work on tonight. So I'm um, going to get into the material right now. We're going to look at some information here in chapter 15. Then I'm going to do some math for you and then I'm going to check my email. And if you've got any specific questions, you can add those through. And then last thing I'll show you is do not forget. I'm going to exit out of 15. And get a drink of water. <laughs> Go back to the home button right up here in the top left. And then I'm going to go down here to the study sessions. Now I had a student who is hopefully on the call tonight and watching who said, John, I'm just having a terrible time with the math. I need help. If you come to the study sessions, you'll notice and some of you may know this already, but I just want to reiterate it for our new students and for those who, who do not know this. When my daughter went through the school, I actually wanted to record each chapter as if I was in the classroom. So every one of these modules, including uh, right down here through Fair Housing, the 21, 20 and 21, every one of these modules are me teaching the material from the downloadable course book that you have as if you were in a live session. OK, so the great thing about that is and I tell students you you don't have to watch those. But if you go through a module, let's say you went through legal descriptions in chapter six and you're like, wait a minute, I don't get it. Go over here and watch the review module in in chapter six in the uh, review, the study sessions, pardon me, because you're going to actually watch me here in my studio, uh, my older studio, uh, going through the material as if you were in a live classroom. Now you don't have to watch those, but they are available for you to watch if you want to. Here's a really cool thing and hello to my South Dakota students. Uh, they're knocking it out of the park in South Dakota with, with their pass rates. According to the folks I work with, uh, Doug and Jeff Nelson, they told me, John, our pass rates are phenomenal. Now in South Dakota, you have to have 116 hours of classroom time. A uh, lot more material, 
We do a blended program up there. So the many of you from South Dakota are taking the national portion through me. And then you watch, then you go and sit with Doug and Jeff for the state portion, 116 hours. Well, in order to cover 116 hours, we require the South Dakota students to watch every study session. So they have to watch, they have to go through the same modules that the folks in Missouri and Kansas go through. But then when they finish chapter one, they've got to watch me present the material in a live classroom setting. And that was the what the, the South Dakota Real Estate Commission approved and liked. And quite frankly, I, I probably should require it for everybody else because as I mentioned, the pass rates are very, very, very good in South Dakota right now. So they're there, you don't have to watch them. If you feel you need extra help or you're having problems, I'd watch those. Because I do cover a lot of things in the, the live setting uh, more examples and talk about some things and most of them are about an hour long so they would be very good for you. So I wanted to point that out but for the lady who mentioned she's having trouble with math. So in the in the study sessions the first 22 modules are all me teaching as if I were in a live classroom presenting the material to students. It was my daughter but she was there, okay? So you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the online class, and if you need a live environment, you, you have that option. But here's what I wanna show you. Below chapter 22 are all of the recorded study sessions. You can see that uh, two weeks ago, or was it last week, September 13th, where it was two weeks ago, that's what I thought. Here's September 13th study session we did. There's the 25th, there's the July 12th. I took some time off in the summer, but you can see that all of those are posted right there. So, excuse me, I needed them. The lights are kind of making it a little bit warm down here. So, there is lots of math in those study sessions. I encourage you to go out and watch those. And I just wanted to kind of remind you, there th those study sessions, including this one, are located at the very bottom of the study sessions, all right? And then I'll send a link to this video out the minute we finish tonight. I mean, that's the first thing I do before I go back upstairs. So I'm trying to give you all I can to help you pass this test. And, and again, our pass rates have been very good. The feedback's been good. The, the material and the resources are, are here for you. And uh, the last thing I'll say before we get started is I got the nicest note from one of my South Dakota students who, th who sent me a handwritten note thanking me for the school, how much it helped. She appreciated it, she liked it, she passed her test and she said, I wrote my first contract this week, John, and I'm so excited and just wanted to reach out to tell me thanks. So. Um, I want you to be write, writing contracts left and right, and, uh, and I want to help you after you get out of school. So I'm a tech guy, and I'm helping agents all the time, coaching them on ways to market and grow their businesses. So you know I'm here for you after you get your license, but first we've got to get your license, right? So let's get started tonight, and I'm going to go out here. So again, one last time, study sessions, recorded video study series, go all the first 22 are here. By the way, you can download the podcast here. If you click on that, it's just going to take you out um, to a link where I think you can, um, you, it takes you out to my Podbean, Podbean account. And so all of the podcasts are out here and you can do those. You can also go to iTunes and look at those as well. Okay, so I'm going to exit here. A lot of times people like to listen to those in their car and I think that's great. And I'm gonna go back up here to the home key, okay? Don't go to the course library because I don't know why and I need to talk to the programmers about this but it just brings you over here and there's really not much there. I guess there are recently viewed so, but you wanna go up here to the home button and that'll bring you over here to your courses. 
Now, sometimes I've had people say, I can't find my course. Well, if you finish the course, it's over here. So, you know, just look around there. But I normally hit the all button and then we want to go into the review modules. OK, and I want to go back down to chapter 15 right there. And we're going to hit resume right here. And it should take me back to the discount points. So it did. Great. All right. So here's the first. Uh, let's just talk about discount points for a minute and kind of work through a couple of these. You're going to have this question on the test, let me tell you. And you need to know about discount points. So notice it says here that discount points are sometimes referred to as, um, you know, they're, they're sometimes referred to incorrectly. And so you have what are called discount points, origination fees, um, other, other ways that can be described as a discount point. Now, here's what I want you to remember. Um, and I, I downloaded this new, the new iOS app and used to, you could swipe right up. And I tell you what, something weird is going on here. Let me see. I'm just trying to pull my so I can mirror this and give me just a second. I don't know what's happening here. I have to try to figure out why let's see i'll just type that in very quickly here and do a search how do you get your control center to come up in ios 12 on your ipad <laughs> Question mark. Let's see. Um, because there's some weird things going on with this iOS 12. And I don't know why it will not allow me to. Used to, you could scroll up from the bottom. And now. Okay, that's interesting. I just found out. You scroll down from the right corner. So I just wanted to put this up so you could see that. Um, I'm uh, so used to, you can see here, they're actually showing you that you go up here into the top and you scroll down. If you see the arrow there, used to you would scroll up from the bottom. So anyway, I wanted to show you that because I want to be able to draw on my iPad so you can see kind of what's going on here. All right, so it should be showing you my iPad screen and we want to talk about discount points. Now remember, when we talk about points, as I try to get my pen to work here. Okay, so my Bluetooth pin was not on, so we'll try that again here. Last week, and you'll see I've had my plane on airplane mode now and uh, wanted to be able to not have
oops, I just, I just lost something there. I'm sorry. Let me give me one half a second here. I had everything per <laughs> fixed perfect here. All right. So let me go back over here to my director mode, put my screen back on. Okay. And now I was trying to delete the reflector app and restart it. So we're going to try this one more time. Okay, here we go. I think we're ready to rock and roll now. And I see one last thing. I didn't plug my, I did not plug my uh, computer in. So I have to run and grab my charger. Other than that, we're having a good time tonight, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can get this again. So a point, I did not have my Bluetooth on. I couldn't get my uh, pin to work. So one, a point or one point is equal to 1% of the loan amount, okay? 1% of the loan amount. So we kind of see this here. And, you know, in the, in the real estate exam, they're going to give you questions that will say the, the um, sales price equals a hundred thousand dollars and the buyer got an an 80 percent LTV well that's what that's how they're they will phrase it in the question and an 80 percent LTV LTV stands for loan to value ratio Okay, that's all it is, loan to value ratio. So 100,000, if we did a, this would just be a simple T problem. 100,000 is the bigger number multiplied by 0 0.80 equals $80,000. Okay. So when we look at a point, a discount point, 1%, a point is equal to 1% of the, and here's what you have to, I want you to write this down and understand it. It's one, pardon me, 1% of the loan amount. Now, trust me, the, the test folks, will try to draw you in to go for the sales price. They will word the question and it's going to want you to think that it, they're going to want you to figure the discount points on the sales price. And you can't do that. You have to figure it on the loan amount. And so they're going to word these very tricky and, and they're going to really try to suck you in to, to miss that little p that little nugget in the question. And you can't do that, okay? Because those are free questions. So, um, so let's go over here to the next page. And I just want to, so I want you to, everybody to be on the same page. One point equals 1% of the loan amount. And now I am going to um, come down here and I'm going to get a different pin color and I'm going to underline that very good. Now, here's the other part you need to know for this. A discount point is what we call prepaid prepaid interest okay 
prepaid interest. A, an origination fee, if you see that, usually just covers the paperwork. In other words, if a person gets a loan, there's all of these papers and documents and things that have to be organized by an administrative assistant, and they normally may charge an origination fee to cover the paperwork, okay? Either one of those options understand that 1% equals, 1% uh, equals um, one point, pardon me, my low battery light just came up. I can't believe I went off and forgot my charger upstairs. But one point equals 1% of the loan amount, okay? So in our previous example, if this was, if this right here was a mortgage fee, that was a mortgage fee, that would be um, covering the paperwork. But as you can see, a discount point is, a, is referred to as prepaid interest. Okay, so when we say prepaid interest, what we're actually talking about is the lender is, is um, increasing the yield on the note, the yield on the note. So let's go to the board for just a second since I have the board now and I'll kind of draw this out for you. I'll make sure that I don't. So let me go up here and hopefully we can kind of take a look and I hope I'm not, my head's not cut off, but <laughs> so, um, and my wife did a wonderful job painting this down here. So I've got a nice big board and I can walk around and uh, I'll, hopefully my chair's not in the way. I invested in a new lens for my camera, which is a wide angle lens. And I got this nice soft uh, uh, lens cover. It's supposed to take the glare off the board, but I know the glare is pretty hot. We're going to get that fixed. So I want to kind of walk you through how a discount point increases the lender's yield on the note. Okay, so let's just say that uh, we have a $100,000 $100, sales price. Okay. And we have an 80% loan to value ratio, okay? So we've got $100,000 sales price, 80% loan to value ratio. Now, if we work our T problem, uh, I'm putting my math symbols on here, okay? So the T problem says, remember, part goes on top, and we have total down here. And we have rate here, okay? So if you have, when we do the T problem, you'll always have two of these, but you'll be missing a third one. And as you, if you go back and watch some of the other study sessions I've done when we've talked about math, I love to, to remind you or tell you that um, the, the exam writers love to give you uh, math problems where you have to figure out, trying to see where my cord is here, there, there it is. I was just gonna move the, um, move my chair out of the way for you here, because I didn't want that to be in your way. So the, the exam writers love to make you normally work one problem get the answer and then work it, work the second T problem. So in this example, we know where the 80% goes right here, don't we? And remember, you always want to move your decimal place over. So if we move this over two places, 
it would be 0 0.80 right there. See that? Now, the next question is, well, where does this $100,000 go? Does it go on top or does it go on bottom? Well, if this is part and that's total, we know part has to be the smaller number, right? And total would have to be the bigger number. Well, what do you think $100,000 is? Would it be the bigger number or the smaller number? Well, if we're trying to find out what the loan amount is, and it's an 80% loan to value ratio, and you're paying $100,000 for the house, wouldn't your sales price be larger than your loan amount? We'd hope so. So where would the $100,000 go? On the bottom. It's the bigger number. So if I put $100,000 on the bottom, the sales price, we now are solving for what is the loan amount. See that? So we have two math symbols on the T. We have a divide button up at the top and we have a multi multiplication bottom at the bottom. So what the T problem is telling us is wherever you have the two numbers, then follow that math sign. So what does our math sign tell us to do? Multiply. If we had a number on top, and a number on bottom, and we were solving for one of the bottoms, what would our math tell us to do? Divide. I'm telling you what, if you get this down, you will like rock through any uh, designation courses you go through. I took the CCIM courses, one of the, some of the best courses I ever took as a real estate professional, and I learned more in those certified commercial investment courses than I ever learned in college. And because I taught pre-licensed real estate school and I knew this T problem, and I just, I knew how to do those math problems for my exams. And the students with me, they were just struggling so bad. So this formula works and you need to get it down and understand it. So now we know we multiply. What's, what do we multiply? A hundred thousand times, not don't use 80% because John said it'll just screw you up on the test, okay? I'm just speaking to you bl bluntly. Move your decimal place over and put in 0 0.80. So 100,000 times 0 0.80 gives us what? $80,000, okay? So that is where we will figure the points. Now, let's just say the lender charges two discount points, and I want to make sure my battery is at 5%. So I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to very quickly put you uh, on pause. I'm going to go get my charger. So if you'll just wait with me for just a half a second here, I will be right back. So I'm going to put this right here. And don't go anywhere if you maybe you need to get up for just a second, but I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. You probably heard my creaky steps going upstairs, but hey, it's okay. We're having fun, right? Uh, we want to help you pass the test. So 
this is very important for you to understand this tonight because I think you will see some questions and and this is kind of complicated but I, I really want you to get this so uh, because what I was showing you earlier excuse me is that discount points are what what do I say discount points are here? They are prepaid interest. Do you see that right there? Prepaid interest. And so since they're prepaid interest, uh, since points are prepaid interest, it does what we call, it increases the lender's yield on the loan. So what do we mean by that? Increases the lender's yield. That's what I wanna to explain to you. So here's the $80,000 loan right here. We know this is the loan. The lender in this case is going to charge two points, two discount points. Now, notice I said discount points. D-I-S-C-O-U-N-T, discount, discount points. Just didn't look like I had written that correctly. Um, so two discount points. So let's figure out what the points are in this case. So we do another T problem. What are the discount points? Two. It's 2% 2 because remember one point, whether it's a discount point or an origination fee equals 1% of the what? The loan amount right there not the sales price, the loan amount. So if they're charging two discount points, we know it's 2%. John says to move my decimal over two places. So that would be point, well, there's nothing out here. So you have to add a zero. So it'd be 0 0.02. Now, remember, this is part, this is total. What are we solving for here? Well, we're solving for the discount points. Will the discount points be smaller or larger than the sales price? Because we always figure our discount points on, it's 1% of the loan amount. I said sales price, but I meant loan, loan amount. So I apologize about that. So in the total is gonna be the loan amount. So it's $80,000. We're solving for how much are the points? the discount points. That's what we're solving for. So $80,000 and our math tells us to what? Multiply. So 80,000 times 0 0.02. Why 0 0.02? Because they're charging two discount points and one point equals 1% of the loan amount. So when we take 80,000 times 0 0.02, we get $1,600 in discount points. Hopefully you can read that. I know there's, there's a hot spot there, but we'll see how that plays back. It's nice that I have this great big long board now that I can write on, so I can even come back over here and write some more, which I might here in just a second. Um, so let's think about this. Remember, a discount point, remember what I said, this is prepaid interest. It increases the lender's yield on the loan. Okay, think about that. Increases the lender's yield. It makes, the lender makes more money off the deal. <laughs> They're making a higher interest rate than whatever they originally charge on this. And you say, wait, how could they make a higher interest rate? Well, let me show you. In this example, if I'm the lender and you want to buy, and this is the scenario here, and I say here is $80,000. And I just gave you $80,000 to buy a house, okay? It's only $40, but we'll pretend it's $80,000, okay? 
So here it is. Here's 80,000. You can buy that house. Oh, but I charge two discount points. So you now have to give me back how much? $1,600. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So you just gave me $1,600 back. Let's think about that. I gave you how much? 80. You gave me how much? $1,600. So I gave you 80,000. You in turn gave me $1,600. So as a lender, if I gave you 80,000 and you gave me $1,600, how much am I really out of pocket? I gave you 80, you gave me 1,600. I'm really out of pocket $78,400, right? I'm just doing that in my head. I think that's right. But if you take 80,000 and subtract 1,600, it should be, well, let's see, 80,000 minus 1,600 equals $78,400. Double check it. And that's what I got. So the lender's out $78,400. But originally, when you went to get the loan, they said, we'll give you an $80,000 loan at 5% interest for 20 years. Okay? Now, if I if I plug this in my calculator, $80,000, and I have a financial calculator, and so I plug in $80,000, and I plug in 240 months, which is 20 years, and I plug in 5% interest, I get a payment of $596.46. I'm going to just double check that. $80,000, principal value, uh, 240 months, 5% interest. Actually, the payment, I hit something wrong there. The payment's 527.96. 527.96. That's what you're going to pay me every month. 527.96. That's an $80,000 loan amortized for 20 years at 5% interest. Your principal and interest payment to, be, to me will be $527.96. What's wrong with this picture? As a lender, I'm only out $78,400. However, I'm earning money back from you as if I gave you an $80,000 loan. But remember, I gave you $80,000 and you gave me $1,600 back, which were discount points, which is called what? Prepaid interest. And this does what? It increases the lender's yield profit on the mortgage. Does that make sense? Now you could see questions in a multitude of ways and I guarantee you, you might see something about one point equals one percent. We cover that in the material, but I want you to see the mechanics now of how this works. And this is why when we get into finance, we have things about um, disclosure, truth and lending, the APR, because a lot of people don't realize, you know, what if I paid six points? Well, that 5% rate, because I'm actually getting a higher return, might actually turn out to be five and, um, you know, three eighths or whatever. I don't know. I, I mean, we're, you don't have to do that for the exam and I'm not calculating it, but the lender has to disclose that to you that you're actually paying back 6% or five and three quarters or whatever that is based on the fact that you had to pay some prepaid interest. Okay. Does that make sense? 
So a lot of stuff going on here, but a lot of stuff you very well could see on the test. And I really wanted you to see, uh, I wanted to stress about discount points again, and I wanted to, to show you how that prepaid interest actually helps the lender make a bigger profit than what they're actually claiming, okay? So, you know, I was out 80,000, but then you gave me 1600 back. So I'm really now my, in my billfold, you know, or I'm only out of pocket $78,400, but you're going to pay me back based on 80,000. So we've increased the yield on the note. Okay. Any questions? I'm going to go out here real quick and take a look just to see if we have any questions that may have come in. And I'm glad I found out how to uh, figure out that mirroring. I do not see any questions right now, so we won't, um, We won't worry about that. So we'll go back out here to the iPad. Okay, good. All right. So feel free to write any questions you might have. You can send those through and we'll take a look at those for you. So I actually wanted to go back out to the course material. So my apologies. So we're going to go back over here to chapter 15 review right here. Okay. So I guess my time limit, <laughs> I have to fix that. I, I guess we were on some kind of review quiz there and I didn't, I want to go back up here. I think I must have hit a button there and dropped down. So I want to go back up here to points so we can go back over some of that information that we were covering. And gosh, I see it's already almost nine o'clock, but I want to go through a few more things with you here very quickly. Here we go. Points right there. Okay. So again, keep in mind a discount point is 1%, one percent. One point equals 1% of the loan amount. Very important right there. All right. So let's jump over here. And I give you this example. We actually work this on the, you know, similar to this concept, but uh, if, if a borrower is getting a $50,000 loan with three discount points, the total and points paid at closing would be 1500. See that 50,000 times 0 0.03. Now, what if there was one origination fee charged in the above example? It'd be $500, 50,000 times 0 0.01, right? And I give you that there. What if the sales price is 70,000? How much is one point with regards to the above loan? It's $500. Why? Because points are charged on the loan amount, not the sales price. Okay. Now always figure points on the loan amount, not the sales price. We've talked about that. And here's this one eighth rule. So a discount point is prepaid interest and uh, it increases the lender's yield on the note. One other thing I want to talk about here, just to kind of show you this as well, is there's this thing called the one eighth rule. And I don't think you'll see this on the test, but sometimes, let's see how this board cleans up. I've got a, because this is a new, it's a brand new board that we painted. I do have a spray and I may need to spray this periodically. So if you don't mind, I'm going to just, I've got my stuff right here. So we'll just, um, try to clean that up so I can keep my, keep this in good shape. Yeah, I think that's going to work good. So the, <coughs> excuse me, bringing days, bringing my days back at the college when I used to teach there 
although the chalk was uh, always pretty crazy to have to deal with. All right. So, um, one of the things they talk about here is that uh, sometimes, and again, I don't think you'll see this on the test, but I want you to understand this with discount points. Sometimes lenders go out and borrow money. So if a lender is borrowing money at 3% and they have to, the, the competitive radius, so you're borrowing money at three and you can only loan it out at two and three fourths percent. I can't believe I'm talking about that because I've been in real estate 40 years and you know, we've never seen rates as low as they've been. You know, this is 13 and 12 for years and years when I would teach. But there is a time when a lender goes out and gets a big block or pool of money and they pay 3% for that money. And this is all behind the scenes stuff. Like I said, we don't have to worry about. But then when they go to loan it out, there's, they're only able to loan it out to you because of the competitive environment at two and three fourths percent interest. So what happens is there's a loss here, isn't there? So they're actually losing money on your loan. So for every one eighth percent interest lost, one eighth percent lost, if you charge one point, you'll make up for the difference. Okay, so that's what we're talking about on this specific slide where we talk about the one eighth rule. So just wanted you to, um, you know, to be aware of that and um, that, that there is this one eighth percent rule. So I didn't need to, I just needed to, I was thinking it needed me to screen, uh, to stream my iPad again, but no, we're on this. So we're good to go here. So again, one point equals 1% of the loan amount. Don't forget that, okay? So here's a question. I think we're coming up here. Compute the following. Falk buys a home for 80,000 and obtains a 95% loan to value. If the lender charges 2.5% discount points on this loan, how much will Falk be out of pocket on the day of closing? So let's just click show me, show me. And right here, we'll go through this. Uh, actually, there's a little video we can take a look at here. And I have the sound muted, but in this specific example, uh, we're going to do a T problem. And we're going to take 80,000 and we're going to multiply it first by the 0.95. Now, why are we doing that? We've got to find out, you know, again, we have to find out what the loan amount is. So, you know, he, he buys a home for 80, gets an 85% loan to value ratio. And we know that points are figured on the loan amount, right? So the first step is to take 80,000 and multiply it times 0.95. It's just a T problem, okay? And remember, 95% move your decimal over two places. When we multiply 80,000 times 0.95, we get $76,000. $76,000 represents the loan amount, okay? Now, there were two and a half discount points, so we multiply that times 0 0.025. Again, another T problem, just like we've done, and that will give us $1,000. $900 in points, okay? So that's how we calculate and figure that. Now, I want to drop down for the remaining time tonight, and I just want to, actually, we've gone a full hour, but I want to kind of go down here and I wanted to see, here we go. Some of these different loans very quickly here. Okay, right here. 
So I'm going to go through some of these. We'll talk about them and then we'll wrap up for tonight. So fixed rate loan, I think we all understand it's a loan with the same interest rate throughout the life of the loan. With a fixed rate loan, your interest rate will never go up. It will never go down unless if you saw a test question that said if, if a person had a fixed rate loan and their, their monthly payment changed, what would that be a reason? Why would that happen? Well, if their taxes or their insurance went up or down the pay and they had their taxes and insurance escrowed, which means they were figured in to the payment, then their payment could go up or down. So again, if your taxes or insurance went up or down and they were included with your mortgage principal and interest payment, they were escrowed, then your payment might change. Otherwise, a fixed rate loan, your interest rate will stay the same. Now we have what is called an adjustable rate mortgage. This is when a, a loan can go up or down. Either way, in fact, I'm going to just uh, do a couple more of these and we'll call it a night. But a couple of things I want to point out for you on an adjustable rate mortgage. So I'm going to come back up here to the board so that we can see. And I will get some of this. I'm just going to, you know, we're just going to have fun like we're in class. Okay. So if I have to go up and get my charger or we have to take a break, we will do that. And if you will allow me to erase the board from time to time, that would be great as well. So an adjustable rate mortgage can go up or down. These actually, you know, they used to be very popular when interest rates were a lot higher because, um, you know, back, back years ago, you might have 11% fixed rate loans, but you could get a 9% adjustable rate mortgage, an arm. And people would pay really high closing costs to get these fixed rate loans. And I would always tell people, you know, don't get a fixed rate loan because unless you're going to be there for a long time. And I would see people pay like huge dollars in closing costs to get this fixed rate loan because they had to have a fixed rate loan and sell the house less than a year later. And there's something for you as a real estate agent. People will buy a home from you and turn around and sell it relatively quick. It's just the way it is. That could change since interest rates are so much lower today. But, you know, things happen. People move, people get a divorce, people can't afford the house payment. And, you know, there's lots of unfortunate things that can happen. But what I want you to understand is with adjustable rate mortgages, you could get a lower interest rate and have zero closing costs sometimes or low closing costs. And so look what happens here. You, these people pay, you know, an extra three grand to get this fixed rate loan and it's a higher interest rate. So there's an additional, you know, $4,000 in extra interest versus this. So here they got no money down and they saved 4,000 because of the res reduced interest rate. And so, you know, this just makes a better deal. It's an adjustable rate mortgage. However, there are some things with an ARM. Um, when I first started selling real estate, and again, I got my license in 1978 at the age of 18. So when I first got my real estate license in 1978, the market was great. I mean, you know, I'm a kid in college and I popped a couple of deals and I'm making really good money and I'm thinking, whoa, <laughs> this is nice. This is a nice gig. And then 1980 came along and interest rates started going up and people started losing their homes and it was a terrible time. And I remember people I knew my entire life, grown men and women coming into our office, uh, telling us they were going to lose their home. And so what had happened back in the early 80s was that there were two things going on just from a historical perspective. So you'll get a kind of an understanding. The savings and loan institutions had fixed rate mortgages 
And so when interest rates went up, they could not raise their interest rate. The banks and say the banks were a little bit more uh, sharp. I guess their attorneys were more were a little sharper than the SNL guys. And if you'll remember back, as some of you may not, but in the 1980s, the savings and loan industry actually collapsed and the government had to come in and, and create what is called the Resolution Trust Company to go and prop up these savings and loans. It's a horrible time. And, you know, I knew many people in the savings and loan business who lost their jobs and just a horrible, horrible time. So the banks, on the other hand, had these attorneys who had, the, had put these little clauses, which we talk about in finance, and we'll talk about next week when we continue to move through uh, chapter 15. But they had these little clauses that gave them the opportunity to raise the interest rate. So here's what one bank did in my town. I kid you not. They sent you a letter, if you had a loan there, and they said, and you opened the letter up and it said, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Mayfield, we regret to inform you um, that we're calling your note due, due and payable. Remember that um, due, on, due on sale clause or there's a alienation clause or acceleration clause. Um, and, and they basically had the right, and if you haven't been through chapter 15, you'll get that soon, to accelerate all of your payments due and payable. So I knew people who got these letters, they brought them into my office and they said, um, your loan's due and payable by October 31st, otherwise we're gonna foreclose and take it back. You know, you have to come in and pay us off. That was the first paragraph. Then in the second paragraph, they said, oh, by the way, if you prefer, you can come into the bank and sign new loan documents and we'll be glad to keep your loan here with us. But when you went to the bank to sign the new loan documents, instead of paying 11 at that time or whatever, you were now paying 18%. Kid you not, it's how it happened. Well, this was a nightmare for people, kind of like in 2005 and six when we had the meltdown of the mortgage industry. A lot of this same stuff was happening back then. You would have thought we would have learned our lesson, but uh, a lot of people lost their homes because all of a sudden you had a $400 a month mortgage payment, you know, that was a lot of money. And now it's pretty much doubled or gone up to $900 a month. And back then, you know, people just couldn't afford it. So they let their houses go back to the bank and we had a lot of stuff going on. But they, they, because of this and because of the collapse, the government kind of stepped in and required banks to start offering what are called adjustable rate mortgages and be more transparent in disclosing and providing how that rate could fluctuate if you take this ARM and many of the other mechanics and details. So it was pretty good because in, back in the early 80s, the one bank I was talking about, they just jacked your rate up as high as they could. They didn't really care. Now you actually have some, some parameters, okay? So let's take a look at this just so we can kind of see. So when they made these changes back then, they actually have some, and we study these, some things like caps and margins. So let's take a look at how this and why this, um, how the adjustable rate mortgage operates and works and why it's a little bit better today. So first thing, uh, the adjustable rate mortgage has a term. So it could be a three year arm or a five-year arm, or a seven-year arm. It could even be a one-year. And so this means the, the interest adjusts every uh, renewal period, whatever you choose, one, three, five, or seven. The other item that you have is what we call caps. And so we have these caps that would be uh, there re there's normally two caps. There's one per adjustment and there's one for the life of the loan. Okay. So you might have, you might see something that would be a three year arm 
with 2% and 5%. A 2% adjustment cap and a 5% lifetime. So if you started out at an 8% interest rate, every three years, let's just say you were on a three-year arm, your interest rate could only go up or down how many, how many points? Two. So it could go up or down 2%. Over the life of the loan, so if this was a 20-year note, it could never go higher than 14% if it was a five-year arm. I think that's right. No, it'd be 13%, sorry. I have to check myself. I had somebody this week and, you know, I do these recordings and um, somebody had a good question this week and I guess on the video, I try to put the video, doing a lot of the videos, I'll actually pull some of this out and put it in the material for future students so they can see this. But sometimes I may say something incorrectly, but hopefully you guys get it. But um, if it's a 5% lifetime arm, 5 plus 8 is 13. So the highest this could ever go would be 13%. And it would take, if you were on a three-year arm, it would have to go up 2% in three years, 2% in another three years, and then it would be really the ninth year before you could ever see that 13%. Well, keep in mind, you're paying down on your mortgage balance and, you know, inflation, different things are going up. So I always told people, a lot of times an arm loan is really a better loan to get. I mean, um, personally, that's all I've ever had. And it's, and it's never been a bad deal for me. And in fact, it, it's been great now because why? You know, my interest rate on my home has dropped from when we started, which was the time we bought the house we're in now, which at that time interest rates were, were around 10 or 11%. And now my interest rate on this home is down below four and right at four because it was an adjustable rate mortgage. So it went down um, in relation to the loan. And we didn't pay a lot of closing costs because with arms, you don't pay a lot of closing costs. So, um, you know, I want you to see that this gives you some protection. Uh, you know, five-year loan, and again, these you're going to start out with a higher interest rate for the longer that it adjusts. The shorter it adjusts, the lower the interest rate might be. So those are called caps. And then we have what is called two other items. You have what's called an index, and you have a margin. So the way this margin, margin might be 2.5%. So the index, if it's tied to the treasury index bill, I'm just using that because every bank and more savings and loan uses something different. Uh, they're going to look at this, you know, they'll tell you and they're going to go out on your anniversary date, look at what this index is at. And let's just say it's at 7%. They would add 2.5 to this. And so what could your rate adjust to? It would no longer be eight at the end of three years but it would be 9.25. So as we, you know, as we study this material and go through it, lenders have to give you the history of this index so you can see how volatile it is, does it move a lot, and they're gonna to have to tell you what the margin is and all these other types of things. And in fact, they have to give you a scenario of if it goes up 2.5% at the end of three years and your loan balance was this, here's what your new payment would be. So a lot of details in that. So just keep in mind, an adjustable rate mortgage can go up or down. You have lots of various things in there like caps and the index and the margin. And, uh, you know, pretty much I think that hopefully can help explain how the, um, the loan works. Now let's go back over very quickly to the next one. I want to do just a couple more of these very quickly. And I want us to look at a graduated payment mortgage. I'm going to let you read that real quickly while I wipe the board off. But a graduated payment actually is going to go up over time. Now, this is sometimes very beneficial for people who may be um, 
doctors who do not, uh, they've just come out of medical school and they have a lot of medical bills and so they can't really afford a big payment right now, but in the future, they're going to be able to make a higher payment. So let's take a look at this. So with a graduated payment, you may start out down here with your monthly payment and then over a certain period of time, your payment graduates up, your payment graduates up again, and then finally, you're gonna be making this payment the remainder of the note. So, but the first 10 years, let's say, you are not making enough, this is where you should be from day one, right? That's where you should be, but you're not gonna get here until 10 years later. So during the first 10 years of the loan, you actually are in a negative amortization mode. Why? Because each month you're making these low payments, you, you're short what you should be paying. So you have all of this right through here that we call negative amortization. In other words, when you make your payment here, you're short, so your mortgage balance is actually, you know, there's a little, that's not going anywhere. So at some point, you're gonna be making a higher payment and it will all, it'll all figure out and work out over the length of the loan. But if you go to, if you have to go to sell in the first couple, three years, you're gonna probably have to bring some money to the table unless your property value appreciated. And that happens in areas like, um, we're seeing a lot of that all over the country, but in Florida and California, Texas, you even though you might be in negative amortization, if you have to go sell here, your property value may have been worth here at that point, but now it's way up here, so you can hopefully make a profit and pay that off. But you need to know what negative amortization is. It's good for doctors, um, attorneys, dentist, you know, anybody who is um, maybe going to start a practice and at some day hopefully have um, some very good income where they can pay that back. Well, I'm looking at the clock. It's 920, so we've gone a little bit. I know there was the kind of tough getting started there, but uh, we covered a little bit of information today. I hope this was helpful for you. I will put this in the study sessions for you tonight. There's plenty more there for you. I'm gonna take one more quick look to see if I have any questions coming in. I do not see any, but you know you can write me anytime. So just reach out to me. I'm here to help you out. Um, Keep studying and, and you're gonna do great. You're gonna love this business. It really is a great business. And uh, I just wanna tell you again, thanks so much for your business. Thanks for your kind comments. And I uh, hope you have a great, I uh, hope you get a restful night. You have a great Friday and a great weekend. You'll be studying, so you're, you're like me. I've got tons of work to be doing, but hey, um, it's all gonna pay off. So don't give up on your dreams, all right? Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks for watching. And I'm gonna to try to do this again next Thursday now that it's fall and winter. Um, and, I'm, and I hope this format was okay because I'd like to kind of start going through some of the modules and explaining some of this. And then I'm gonna pull some of these videos out to, to plug into the modules for future students. And maybe some of you who are new coming through, you'll see some of these as you get into chapter 15 as well. Have a great day. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much.